comment on the preceding program, please call the response line 24 hours a day at 456-0860. Your comments are appreciated. Bienvenidos al tercer programa de Fusion, presentando nuevos talentos locales de Brampton. Comenzando con Run Funk, Team Scam y una presentación especial en vivo por el grupo Demon Bar. Además, un cortometraje de Nueva York, invitados especiales y mucho más esta noche en Fusion. ¡No se lo pierdan! We hope you're enjoying your visit here this evening. Now, on with the show. Suffering. A sad eye in arid wasteland. Cracks, like an ice cube in the angered hand. Frantic mind sifts through the sand. Reels like a coiled snake in the Sun King's land. Tortured soul of tottery stand. Stings like a scorpion inside the fire's band. Take my 
Well, let them know who you are and just, you know, a couple words to the kids. Hi, kids. I'm Ted Nugent, full-time. I'm a damn Yankee. Have you noticed that? Now, this is Cable Fusion. Is that what you call it? It's Rogers Community 10. The show's called Fusion. He's speaking in Canadian. I can't understand him. So we'll just, <laughs> we'll just leave you with this. Don't be a gomer. Be a commando. No! No! That's great. <laughs> Dream on. Not far from here. Tell me about your uh, first encounters with the entertainment industry. I understand as a child you did some acting. Oh, you're right. Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, my mother got me enrolled in speech and drama classes, and actually with my other brothers as well. And we all ended up doing commercials, and I ended up doing the majority, and ended up involved in movies like Village of the Damned. Did, uh, so they brought you around auditions and whatnot? Yeah. They're, they're I, very supportive? Yeah. I, oh, man, I remember getting up very early in the morning, like before the sun had even arisen, and be there. Sometimes it's suppressing a cold. I have a vivid memory of waking up on a winter morning, a very dark morning, and there's my mum putting uh, hot lemon and honey, trying to make sure my throat was okay. Because of my connection with the alternative scene, um, Silly Limits was my favorite program on the service, and Christopher Ward was handling it then. And ironically, Christopher was getting his career off the ground as a, as a songwriter, first of all as a singer, because he released a, um, an album during his tenure with Much Music, it was on Attic. And then he was also tinkering with uh, the Atlanta Miles project, which then really took off in a big way for him. And he was unable to handle the duties for Limits in addition to the VJ, regular VJ duties there. So he said, would I take over the, the City Limits show? So I said, fine. Right. And that was because essentially there was no one there that wanted to do that at the time that was on our talent. And so I, I wasn't going to let the program fall by the wayside. No. It was sort of like, here's the ball, run with it. Right. And that was a big part of it. Now, uh, that evolved also into special projects? Yeah. Um, Oh, wow, I was doing so many things. There was the fax thing, and then the city limits thing, and then uh, they wanted me to do special projects, so I ended up doing documentaries on uh, Bob Marley, Scar, Neil Young, um, and essentially he became the service's almost designated header or utility guy. I remember in particular your uh, documentary special, Punk 76 to 79. Yeah. Now, your capacity in that was uh, producer? Yeah. Yeah. I did that for the new music. Mammoth Job? Oh, it was. I was really big. Uh, the New Music has one of the best music archives in North America, and most particularly of that scene, because the New Music got off the ground in 1979. That was just post-punk, but they managed to capture everyone that was part of that scene. And, uh, you know, that was, you know, Johnny Rotten, then he was in, they were interviewing during his pill days, but he was talking about his Sex Pistols days and, you know, the Dead Kennedys and the whole two-tone thing that evolved out of punk. Um, so they had great archives and I was able to go through that and log it all and then piece together mm -hmm. that documentary and then do catch-ups too. And one of the big educations for me was just how important the Toronto punk scene was. I was very aware of the Vancouver punk scene, but I didn't realize just how significant the Toronto scene was. And so that was great for me. I have no real heroes in the music industry. There are people that I respect and like, uh, but I have no real heroes per se. And so, it, ones that you enjoyed speaking to? Yeah, that's a better way of putting it. I always like to think of it. Um, a good gauge of, of it for me is: Would you invite them home for dinner? You know, and uh, so there are certain people I'd love to have a uh, a non-camera dinner date with. Um, Pete Townsend was amazing. Tina Turner was amazing. Uh, Billy Bragg's a great guy. I'd like to have a pint with Billy. In fact, I have had a few pints with Billy. Um, Hugh Corn, one of the Stranglers. Timothy Leary was fascinating. Uh, when the Stones were through, any did you? Did Jagger? Uh, Jagger's all business. Uh, on camera, he won't talk the talk. You know, he he keeps it at business level. He's a tough nut to crack. Uh, I'd love to see him with uh, his barriers down. Right. Well, even with the camera off, if, if there's people around, is he No, he's, he's, he's very much on. Yeah. Uh, he's lived his life in front of the cameras and in front of the press. And the interesting thing about the role is that uh, I, too, had great disdain for rock and roll press. Even still do. <laughs> I'm just another schmuck doing a job with a camera, right? 
Uh, but I can understand the disdain for it, and it has this weird symbiotic relationship. Uh, rock and roll needs the press, and then suddenly I became the press, and I was like, oh man, you know, please don't spit too heavily on me. Uh, Joe Visvari of uh, Images and Vogue fame, he and I have been working the last uh, year get some songs done. We're going to take another run at Dance Speak. Well, hopefully we'll get an album out. We've been recording it with Daryl Flynn, uh, bass player for National Velvet and Images in Vogue. And we have six tunes. We're going to keep going and um, hopefully you'll see them on this program too. We're genuinely excited and um, pray it all goes well when we get a record out. Is, it, is there any time schedule on it or are you just... No, we'll just keep you're going. Doing well, it as you're doing it? Within another year, hopefully, we'll get the record out. This September, the new music crosses over to Much Music, so both areas of my involvement will now be on one service. So uh, the new music will keep me busy doing special Simon stuff. I'm still programming Much Music along with the other members on the programming committee. And, and then special Simon stuff's for Much. Whenever they need me You'll to do, it. yeah, I'll be doing it. Kim, I want to thank you for taking time out to talk to us and all the best in the future. Hey, my pleasure. Thank okay. you for asking me, John. Thanks. All right. And dance me. Watch out.
Why don't you say something or hang up? <laughs> 